new workbench. Today we have this antique tabletop radio that was no longer working and we are transitioning it to a Bluetooth uh, music player. Now the a lot of purists will say that I should have taken it to get uh, it repaired. It still had all the parts, all the tubes and everything, but it was not in working condition. I did not have the resources or know anyone that could fix a tube radio and also I don't listen to the radio so it wouldn't do me any good um, but I do listen to a lot of music off of my phone and with the Bluetooth I can connect directly to this stereo and listen to my music through the stereo so we have all the knobs here on the front the station changing knob is still functional although it doesn't actually do anything and the volume knob is still functional just kinda cool the other two are just for show so we'll turn it around I'll show you what I did and how we put it together okay so here we are in the back you notice I have two speakers one facing backwards one out the original speaker holes in the front um, they're just old car speakers uh, you could use other speakers but this is what I had the reason I did it in stereo is because on songs that heavily use that stereo feature where the sound bounces from one side to the other um, instead of having to go into my phone and change my sound to mono it's already here in stereo no problem so I'll take this speaker off here's my inside I've got a small power bar that also has a USB attachment which I needed I have my amplifier and my Bluetooth receiver. So we'll talk about the Bluetooth receiver first. There are many different brands. I chose this Belkin Puck. Um, it seems to work pretty well. The It comes with a metal disc on the inside to give it weight. I guess because people think if something weighs more then it must be better quality. Um, but it's not used for anything and in fact it seemed to interfere a little bit with the signal. So I open, carefully opened up the top of this um, puck, pulled out the metal plate which was just taped on with double sided tape, put it back together and now it's much lighter and the signal seems to be better. And I put some velcro on here and on the top of the radio and it just sits there floating where it can receive the best signal. So that's the Bluetooth. The speaker here, I had to take a piece of wood, it's just a piece of three quarter or one quarter inch plywood um, I had to cut out a circle so that I could mount the speaker to it um, the reason I had to do that is because these speakers stick up and so I had to give it a little extra space so it wasn't touching the wood vents in the front of the radio um, next in order to light the dial in the front uh, I wired an LED remember to use um, the proper wiring and I wanted it just to be USB so it's 5 volt um, and in order to get everything right I went to Radio Shack and calculated the right resistor that I needed and the right level of LED so that provides that nice glow behind the dial in the front so we'll unplug the last portion is the amplifier so here we have the input from the Bluetooth audio input the output to the two stereos or the two speakers and the power which goes to my power bar now the cool thing about this if we can get it turned around the original volume knob looked just like these two so what I did is I took some JB Weld and this is the old um, volume knob, the antique one from the radio. So I took some JB Weld, welded that old knob onto the amplifier, and then welded up here in the inside 
so that the amplifier knob and the antique knob were held together. And that way you can adjust the volume from the original uh, Bakelite knob in the front of the radio, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. And it worked out that I didn't have to change the height or anything. I was able to just attach it and this amplifier was at the right height that just slid right through the hole. You want to attach the amplifier down to the radio with screws, um, which I did, and put it all together. It all tucks neatly inside the box. Here is the original um, station adjuster, which I showed you earlier, still works. So I kept that in place. The original radio had a shelf with all the tubes. It was just packed with wires and tubes and resistors and you know all that stuff. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know a lot about it. But with this e simple power bar, fit perfectly in there. Two power um, power bricks uh, and the USB for the LED light. Put everything together. The you just need to find it on your phone or music player. Uh, under Bluetooth you connect and voila you can play your music right through this radio um, without any wires coming out. Now the another option that you have if you don't want to use Bluetooth uh, is you can plug in just a simple um, cord here and plug it into your phone just a, um, a, a regular jack so you can do it corded or cordless. Um, gets about 20 to 30 foot range as long as it's in a clear view. Um, behind obstacles you start to get some static. Um, if you want you could stick the Bluetooth puck on the outside. That might give a better signal. I just wanted everything hidden uh, on the inside so that it was a totally wireless um, music experience. So that's it. I hope you liked it. Um, if you have any questions Put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Please subscribe to my channel and enjoy my other how-to videos. Thank you. Okay, I've got it connected to the Belkin for Bluetooth. I'm going to play something that fits with the period of the radio. Little Glenn Miller. And you can see I have volume control. So there you have it.